So welcome to a history of furry and brony music. Uh, this kind of panel, we're going to be talking about some of the notable musicians um, from across furry history, going back as far as the late 1990s when internet was kind of starting out and the fandom was starting to pick up steam. Uh, fandom goes back much further, but the internet didn't really start until like the 90s and you know the the primitive forms that we are it's pretty much dead now. <laughs> But, um... Well, no, it's not dead. BBS's? Bulletin Board Systems? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Slightly, okay? Slightly. I mean, Furry Muck and IRC are still around, but... No, Bulletin Board Systems are gone, dude. World Wide Web True. took over True. a long time ago. True. Okay, so, who here likes art? Yeah, cool. Well, everyone likes art? Yeah. Go figure. You're a furry. I'd be surprised if you didn't. Um... <laughs> or brownies, or some other species that I know of that I don't really... No. Wicker Beasts. He's the ex brony so that's why we have the brony music here. <laughs> um, so we're going to go ahead and start out by talking with the two idiots in front of you. There are many forms of art in this family. I'm not no idiot. You are. We're both idiots. I'm sad. Are we both idiots? Raise your hand. <laughs> are, are we the idiots of here because we don't know how to make things work? Yes. I agree with that. Okay, so. I blame the last people. Was the last Scar, time. how old are you? How old am I? I'm 21 years old. You sure about that? Yes. You're like five. <laughs> <laughs> so does half the furry fandom. Well, no. Okay, so I've been a furry for five years. My um, persona is a blue domestic cat named Scar. Um, you can see some cute art of him. I am. Um, so I collect. You're cute. Yes, I collect a lot of art, and yes, I am cute. I'm not cute. <laughs> I'm sure they're you have a very lengthy <laughs> yeah. debate about that. Yeah, um, really you're just in the artist, they're sitting there in the bottom corner. But um, in the fandom, I do a lot of work as a historian and an archivist. I run a YouTube channel, it's just youtube.com slash scarthefur. I make videos about the history of different eras and people, events, everything pretty much in the furry fandom. And um, I've done archival work specifically on some very old furry music and also soon uh, the Yarf fanzine, if anybody's familiar with what that might be. Um, TD, um, long story short, way back in the day before internet distribution was a thing, artists would come together and make these little magazines they'd all contribute to and sell to people to get their art out there. And it's a, a very long running old one of those. <laughs> That's a tale for the protect. Shadow, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? No, I really don't want to. <laughs> Guys, I am the wonderful Cookie King. I am Shadow Larar. Pleasure to meet every one of y'all. Is everyone having a great time? I can't hear you. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm 25 years old. I've been in the furry fan for about seven plus years. I'm a elder dragon. I'm old. Even though I'm 25 years old, you can probably confirm it. I don't know. Just pretending it's not here. He's 25. As my species, I'm a dragon. As you can see, I'm a very grumpy dragon. <laughs> Things kind of simply don't go my way. Confirm it then. Uh, I go by many names. I'm the Cookie King, I am Shadow, I go by, uh, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote this line. I did. <laughs> uh, as you mentioned, is, uh, you probably guys have heard of the Furry Broadcasting Network. Has anybody heard of Furry Broadcasting Network? If you've been here before, he's hosted that panel I've several times, panels. I'm told. I've hosted that panel. It went downhill quickly. Uh, now you got me. I am the CEO of Furry Broadcasting Network, LLC. Uh, as far as it's now. It's still going, even though I'm an ex-brony and I still have brony music on there, it's still going. So if you guys want to go visit it, furrybroadcasting.net. Next slide, you ready? Sure. Oh, okay, I gotta keep a constant Star. distance. What is furry music? What is furry music? That is a very silly question. Uh, it's music made by furries. <laughs> it's about as simple as you can. Are you sure it's not made by cats? Cats specifically, no. Furries in general. It's music made by furries and more often than not either uh, talking about subjects within the fandom, or about the fandom, or they are made and kind of distributed to people in the fandom. It's, it's music made by furries for the fandom. It's... You confused yet? <laughs> is, it, um, is anybody here confused so far? Okay. Furries make music. Yes, furries make all kinds of art. They make fursuits, literature. Um, there's a panel at 2.30 from, uh, from one of the authors. You should go see it. I know I'm going to be there. Uh, and of course we make illustration, but we also make music. It's one of the many art forms. Music is a personal interest because I actually am a fan of a lot of the um, musicians that have come to call themselves furry over the years. And um, 
on the note of my history series, it was the first video I ever produced was the history of furry music where I talked about all these different creators um, from throughout the history, which kind of served as like a blueprint for this video, in a, or sorry, for this panel, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Well, it's um, just being recorded. Yes. Hi, so, yeah, yes, video too. Say hi. Say hi to Jane. Um, thank hi. you for recording this. She's an amazing hi. person. She's my roommate. Okay, so what is Brony music? I don't know. <laughs> you've been hosting a Brony radio. You've been hosting a radio station for years. How do you even know? Uh, so Brony music is, of course, ironically, music made by Bronies. Has anybody here? Does anybody know what a Brony is? Yeah. Well, you should ask it. Does anybody know what a Brony isn't? I'm oh, sorry, sorry, no. Does anybody not know what a brony is? <laughs> Who does not know what a brony is? Raise your hand. Okay, good. We're all educated. <laughs> okay, good. All right. The panel's over. We're home. No. <laughs> you wish. Uh, so, for those who did not raise their hand, I know every one of you, uh, bronies are people who love My Little Pony. Princess Luna's Best Pony. Specifically people outside the intended age demographic. So, most of the brony music is, uh, has anybody heard of Daniel Ingram? He's actually one of the lead musicians that actually has uh, scored some of the shows by My Little Pony. He scored some of the actual music on the show. Yes, that is true. Uh, he's done mainly, he's actually helped with fan music, he's been on radios, and of course he has some music on, of course, uh, Shameless Plug-In, for the rest of the world. Uh, those two logos are right there, uh, are my logos. We have Not the top one. Which is an adorable mascot for mainframe radio back in the day. I have to, I had to kill it all because the, it was kind of a bumpy ride for it, so I rebranded. Uh, that's kind of a quick slide, really. I mean, Daniel Ingram, Brownies, and Princess Luna's still best Well, if you want to give your 60 seconds spiel on the FPN, this is the time. I don't want to do the 60 seconds. We're amazing. Say hi. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> So, furry musicians. What yes. is a furry musician? We already covered this. We're just jumping into them now. I know. I know. So. On. You can't talk. You can't talk about free music history without talking about the Free Music Foundation. Um, the Free Music Foundation was made over in Europe in 1997 by Kama C. Fox, and the whole idea was to um, bring all these independent free musicians that were starting to crop up together into one place. Because at the time, the World Wide Web was not a thing, let alone internet distribution, mm -hmm. and furries have always been so spread out. So. Having a way to bring them all together um, was really important back in the day. Uh, what they did with all these musicians is they would um, um, collate all their music into albums that they would then sell um, and mail out to people. And over the time, they released Furry Fantasies, Silky Paws, and then the sequel, Furry Fantasies 2. Um, yes. So I've noticed, I, I'm an electronic musician myself. This is my first furry con. I've noticed that it seems like it's like largely a trance or house, like electronic music type of vibe, right? It, yes. It depends on the, it depends on on the, the music. music. It depends on the, the musician, too. Um, when it comes to dancing, yes. Um, and a lot of furry music that is made by indie artists nowadays um, is very, uh, is usually in that style. To add to that, I've also noticed that, like, the raves that I've been to all around the country, Dances. it seems like I often see furries there. Like, even though it's not a furry event, it seems like it kind of goes hand-in-hand -hand in, like, electronic music. Yeah, yeah, most of the, uh, most, a, for example, uh, have you heard of Tomorrowland? 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I believe there are some furries that go there, I just haven't seen any or know of any that go there. I know a friend that wants to go there, but he's not a furry. Or like, if you've ever heard of so, Swanee in Florida here, the Swanee Music Park, mm -hmm. like, they have lots of electronic music events there, and I've almost always seen furries there. People yeah, well, it's, a very, it's a very diverse community. I mean, you can't really deny, because most of these big events, as long as you're not, like, outrageous, you're probably more than welcome to go in there. You just gotta follow the policies and whatnot. There, uh, there are a lot of um, traditions with cons and dances is definitely one of them. So I'll talk about that a little later. Um, but um, over in Europe, for instance, if anybody's ever heard of that, it's um, a very old con. It's currently the biggest con over in Europe. It's usually held in Germany. Um, during the late 90s and early 2000s, they had an event there called the Free Music Cafe where some of these musicians would go and perform live um, in front of an audience. Unfortunately, as the internet kind of grew and the World Wide Web, you know, kind of took over the older systems and made a lot of kind of what they were doing a little bit redundant, uh, unfortunately, it did kind of fall apart in the 2000s. Yeah, um, yes, it did. Uh, they did have an archive of a lot of their old music, which I did um, upload a lot of on YouTube. Uh, but Most of the archive that I've actually uploaded is actually all on uh, Public Radio. 
Paul Print Radio is my internet radio station. You can actually visit it at paulprintradio.com. Uh, half the music archive is already up there. I'm just waiting until Thursday of next week to actually get my fiber internet so I can upload the rest. Do you take submissions as well? We have a very strict policy of submissions because I kind of have a, um, let's just say we've had issues with people submitting music and I just flat out, do, flat out um, don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good music, but I kind of, I don't, if it's not going to fit it onto the network, right. I kind of send feedback to you, like, hey, I do like your submission, you might need to work a little bit on this, blah, 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 blah. Once you get a little more practice. Too much authority. Uh, well, if you're cur curating a certain sound, you yeah. can't have, like, it's not like you're going to have, you know, George Strait out of Metallica. Yeah. I, I feel you for sure. Um, so towards the end of their life, um, they had a page just called The Ashes where they were planning a rebirth, but it never happened, and they ended up deleting pretty much the entire archive just a couple of years ago. So I was lucky to get a hold of it when I did. So some of the one, one of the songs that we're going to play is uh, Dragonfire by Jelly. Should I explain what this is first? Sure, go right ahead. Um, for each slide, we're, um, for each person we're going to be talking about, or each group, we're going to be playing a song from them so you can kind of get an idea of what kind of styles they have. Now, the FMF is a little unique because it was a bunch of different artists, but um, you'll learn as, once you go into some of these uh, more well-known artists, there's actually a lot of diversity compared to just going out for affinity and seeing what the newest music submission is. <laughs> All right. I hope this doesn't blow my eardrums out this time. Turn the volume, no, turn the volume down. Before you do anything. <laughs> yeah, turn the music, that's what I'm talking about. Turn the music volume down. Oh, got up. That's Emma. Stop it, <laughs> It's like. Sitting around, feeling lost in my pain, didn't know what I was gonna do. I flashed your lightning, your blinding light, and I was looking right up to you. You might know them better as Laugh Box Tracks. First off, <clears> does anybody <throat> have any questions about that last slide? I've always saved questions for the end. That works too. So we don't pad out our runtime longer than it should be. Okay, so Emma, um, in her childhood, she started out um, as a game designer and eventually she started playing around with some different composition software and making, you know, kind of experimenting with music. Um, in the 2000s, she um, launched this album called, or this album, this um, track called this group called Bolt Vibe, um, which was actually only owned by herself, but um, it would later evolve into a rebrand Black Box Tracks, which is kind of when she, um, kind of where she hit her prime and she became probably the most well-known she ever has been. Uh, the, the, be the, closest, the coolest thing about um, Emma is that she, um, this has caused a lot of confusion for a lot of people, myself included, but um, Black Box Tracks has actually consisted of a lot of different characters. Um, and each one is attributed to a specific subgenre of music that they produce. So they're like, okay, I'm gonna make a music, a song in this style, it's gonna be this person singing it. And from there, there have also been collaborations and also um, verses with music, which is actually kind of cool to listen to. Um, and over their time, they have released so many albums that it's not even worth trying to um, number them. There's like an entire archive, there's an older archive, and then, uh, in March. <laughs> okay, and then there's some, uh, and then there's all the stuff she has in Bandcamp, which is way too much, <laughs> way too much to consume in one sitting. Um, and, re and they also later on went to rebrand themselves as Halley Lab, kind of halfway. Some places it's Halley Lab, some places it's Lap Box, so it's kind of uh, both now. And the example we're going to play from them, which might be more in line with what you're used to hearing, is called "The End" by. Um, 
by that was. I believe it was by Renard and Darius, specifically, out of her cast. musician. In 2001, he, um, he released the Kooky Wombo version, they call it, of the furry song, which was just kind of one of his two defining moments. The furry song being this iterative um, song that kind of introduced the fandom to different people. Okay, I'll cut out for a minute. To different people. Uh, it sounds like it's... That's you. Okay, that's me. <laughs> okay. Um, the reason it's called the Kooky Wombo version is because Curl has actually gone by a number of different aliases over the years kind of um, fading out of the fandom and then coming back. And at the time, he was Kooky Womble. But Curl was the name at its height and, popu at its height and popularity. And um, so that's kind of what we all refer to him as. In 2001, Kooky Womble version. In 2004, we had the High version released, which was a complete remake of it. And there have been several other versions, but most of them have unfortunately been lost to time. To quote him, uh, the furry song has been rewritten and deleted no less than 23 times, including the Kransky the Wombat version, a puzzling 17-minute incarnation in which the lyrics consisted solely of the words, my face, your thighs, shouted over and over. <laughs> no, at the time this was a joke, and it was hilarious. But then he actually made that. Unfortunately, I have not been able to track down the copy of it, but I have seen many, many people cite its existence over the years. Um, Later on into his career, um, he would release his final version of the Free Song, the Free, well, the Free Song 2009, which released as the opening track to the Free album, uh, which also released in 2009, actually on my ninth birthday. So, um, we get to make up a spark. <coughs> spark. Yeah. We don't, we don't, oh no, we just wrote turn down the volume because this one gets, like, turn down the volume because this one gets very loud. Because we didn't normal, we didn't normalize the audio, dude. No. <laughs> So, um, kind of closing that out real quick. Um, during that album, another song I wanted to mention was the Commission song, which, if you ever heard me music in the fan, like you've ever heard me music in the fandom, it's a, it's a pretty funny one, satire about commissions. And unfortunately, not long after, he did end up leaving the fandom because he was citing it as a negative influence on his life. And he did like a, a full wipe of his online presence, which is kind of why it's hard to find information on him. Now, Shadow's wanting to move us along, so how about you go ahead and talk about Nice to Singing Dog? Has anybody heard of him? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> hi, guys. Come on. Oh, we can just skip the slide. No. We can just skip the slide. No. <laughs> All right, so as many of you already know who Nice, Nick, Nice, Nick, whoever, Green Doggo, I don't know what you guys call him. I'll call him Kyle. Kyle McCarthy. 
That's actually his real name. You can look him up on Facebook. So Kyle McCarthy, uh, aka the singing dog, Nick, nice, uh, the green doggo, dancing. Oh no, that's dude. <laughs> yeah, that's dude. Uh, he basically started, I believe, in 2012, 2013. His first actual album was his uh, extended play. Extended play. His first album was EP. Then, after a long, in 2014, he came with his trilogy: his uh, Unleashed, which is in 2014; Instinct in 2015; and Beast in 2016. Uh, this, he actually has done also live, live, live performance. He has done it here in Megaplex. I think it was in 2019. And he's actually done it in, what, was it 2019 that nice to the scene? 2018. 2018. 2018, yeah. I, I started, no, that's like the old venue. So yeah, he was here at the old venue, if you guys were here at the old venue. Uh, he mainly does all the performances all over the North East Coast. I don't know exactly how the performance has been. Uh, Probably here. But the really reason why I don't know that is because one, he was on hiatus since two that. He was on hiatus between 2016 and 2018. Recently, in 2000, the late 2018 and very early 2019, and then COVID happened, he's been very lazy and hasn't finished the Escape the Humans album yet. I'm <laughs> busy. He's been very busy with work and everything. But one of the albums that, excuse me, one of the songs that I chose for his slide was Our March. It is a very touching song. You'll understand when I play it. So. Place. Darling, your head is spinning. Turn that one down. The trains down below move slower than you do. Don't the audience again. I know there's weakness in forgiving, but the world up above's doing all I can for you. Keep still, lay your hands inside the corners of my chest. Let them feel my tranquil heart. Make my steady be true. For you will find solace once the panic can subsides And your voice comes back to life now that fear has lost control Tell me what's the use in cowarding, submitting to defeat When the answer lies just ahead and your world's an easy fix Tell me why give up the journey when you've yet to tie your shoes Saddle up, fasten in, and we're ready to begin our march Is there anybody who doesn't know who Foxy Moore is? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so he's one of he's he's a friend of Pepper Coyote. Has anybody heard of Pepper Coyote? He's here. You should have. <laughs> yes, he is here. This is our first year, mate. First year? Yep. It's my first year here too. Right? I haven't been to a con in years. This is our first very convention. Here. Well, welcome. 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 welcome to the Good luck trying to leave it. She makes all of our stuff too by hand. Too. That is nice. awesome and adorable. Thanks. So, fuck some aura. We want to see a collab. <laughs> we want we want to see a collab, don't we? Oh yeah. Right, so fuck some aura. Lane James Moore. He is a Scottish composer and pianist. He is mainly focused on piano type and uh, new age orchestra. Or I still can't. Remember. Orchestral. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Is it Amore, like as in like Dean Martin's Amore, or is it It's um, Amore. It's Amore. It's Amore. It's German. He doesn't know how to pronounce it. It's Amore. Yeah, it's Amore, not Amora. Well, I, I was talking to the, I was I called like, Nick. You know that's not pronounced right. Amore, it's like spelled exactly like that, except for one less O. Yeah, that... I have no idea how to pronounce it, I haven't used it yet, I know he's not here. Yeah, of course, he's back in the UK. He's been, he, yeah, uh, he's been here before. At the old venue at Megaplex, and Pepper Cody and him did a collab. They also have a band. Frogs and Peppers and all that. So basically, he's a Scottish composer, he's a pianist, he focuses on new age and orchestral music. His main primary focus is on independent music. Uh, he doesn't really pull that much, but if he did, he did it with Pepper Cody and all the other people. Uh, his live performances are all over the United States. <laughs> and about. And my man, well, no, uh, I don't know if he does any solo outside of the Murray County, but man, he's no, I meant around the world. That's true. So does he make like tours and all that, basically? I don't, he doesn't do tours like mainstream bands. Right. He does it mainly at conventions. So, I know he's done it at Megaplex. I think he has done it at the BUA, but I think he does it mainly at Megaplex. He's been at the biggest little fur con. I think he's went to MFF. 
There's a lot of conventions that this guy went to, and I just lost complete track after that. Uh, Wait, right is left. this the only megaplex, or like, does it happen in other states too? And mm, this is the only megaplex that there actually happens in yeah. Florida. There is a sister location. There is a sister there is con, a sister con, con in, in Brazil. Brazil. Oh wow. Yeah, they basically co 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 with one another. So that we help them, they help us. It's it is what it is. I learned that during the opening ceremonies. <laughs> Would you like a cookie? After this, yes. No. I'm the cookie king. I deny it. We were, we were trash and we missed the opening ceremonies. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're not very trash, you're just garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so his professional works that he's worked with. He's worked with Southern Studios. Super uh, Villain. Super Villain Studios. Uh, he has done the Order Up uh, soundtrack, the comedy video game parody show Gamers Tonight, and has anyone heard of the fandom? Yeah. 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 Fandom is awesome. He done the actual score and the score of the all that. That was all of Fox War. As a historian, the fandom actually does a really good job of introducing people to fandom history. And the song that he chose was Reoccurring uh, Rescu Rescuing Ghosts. Rescuing, Rescuing Ghosts. Ghosts by Fox and Bar. I'm tired, I'm probably dehydrated, so please forgive me. Can uh, you drink some water? Yeah, I already got water. Here you go. go. Go ahead, sir, Mr. X Brony. Oh, my train of thought. I'm going home. No, you're not. Oh, come on. Alright, so Brony music. I am the X Brony. I'm no longer Brony, even though it's still Princess and it's still Best Pony. And you still run a Brony. And I still run a Brony. <laughs> radio station. Uh, so, Brony music. Ponyphonic. Ponyphonic. Ponyphonic is actually the name of. Um, multiple people have worked under the name of Ponyphonic, but. Primarily, it's a musician named Dane Larson um, who does the music, and the vocalist, I believe, was their sibling, Christina Ellis. Um, and for the most part, they do music inspired by my little pony go figure. Um, they're actually cited often as probably one of, I say one of the best musicians. Or one of the best musicians. One of the best. Yeah. Um, Over the years, they um, have had. A quite extensive discography, um, but some of their notable songs are Lullaby for a Princess, The Moon Rises, Shy Heart, and Big Move to Your Heart. The first two um, have received um, animated music videos from other creators in the community, and uh, the first one of which has probably been the most popular. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's made by Warthout. It's definitely worth a look. It's probably better than the animation and the shows, or I haven't seen the movie, so. <laughs> Has anybody heard of Love Life for a Princess? Yeah. Oh, thank God. It's a really good masterpiece, look it up. Alright, so has anybody heard of the music from Love Life for a Princess? I'm actually ranking it for Saxophone Sunset right now. Well, not all of you. I would like to see that. Or hear it. When you're, you're done with it. Okay. So. We'll be here a little bit after. Are you, doing, are you doing it here at the, at the con? Or oh, no, we... this, this has been like a year long concert, actually. Ah, okay. You know how to contact me. It's, uh, you can't, it's, hard, it's hard not to find me. <laughs> and here we go, what about for a princess? He's on staff, just ask around. <coughs> you can actually find the animation on YouTube. It's actually not a bad anime. I would recommend it. I would it's watch it. Really really it's a fantastic animation.
Aviators. Aviators. Anybody here from Aviators is? I love Aviators. Um, and uh, he might not be a brony anymore, but he definitely started deep within that community. Um, when he first started making music, he, um, he was entering into a a um, competition called the Pony Music Comp in the 12th that ran, um, I believe it was weekly or bi-weekly, and uh, he proceeded to win six contests in a row before withdrawing. <laughs> I think he was trumping the competition a little bit too hard. Um, Aviators has released a lot of albums, but the ones that were Brony related during his time were The Adventure, The Fear of Flight, and Canterlot Carols. Aviators is very famous for collaborations. He usually does at least one or two per album, and as well as including the remixes of said songs. He does a lot of work with other people, um, including Feather, Wooden Poster, Forever Free Brony, Brony Field, Pony One Kenobi. These names are ridiculous. <laughs> um, I could not name them all off the top of my head. Um, but uh, even beyond his brony phase, he did a lot of them. So he also released a series of albums called The Equestrian Revolution 1 through 4. Um, and basically this was him taking a lot of different music from the show or from other creators and remixing it and putting them together into these um, full-length albums. And eventually he did kind of fail from the fandom. It wasn't anything dramatic like with Curl, but it just kind of slowly moved away, although he does reference some of his older music and um, themes from that time now and again. The song we have by him, which is not labeled, I boo. I told I you, we're not, we're not a tech person. We made the entire panel in a last minute thing. I actually don't know the song. Oh, you don't know Oh, yes, it's Open Your Eyes. eyes. Oh, yeah, it is. It's Open Your Eyes. I, I should know. I wish them change. Yeah. spontaneously caught on fire and I don't think they covered that warranty so it's it felt like a really bad purchase on my part. <laughs> it tasted like ash, like the entire thing, not just the toast. It smelled great though. It smelled like fire. <laughs> Yum. Alright, one toaster. He mainly focuses on electronic music. Yeah. He is also known by Glaze. I actually didn't know that. Until literally when we created this he didn't slide they were show. the same person. <laughs> Most artists actually have multiple different names, of course, like Left Box Tracks. Uh, they actually have multiple different names and different sodas that represent each of those names, and they'll release different albums. Confused yet? Anyone? Okay. Okay, cool. All right, so the collaborations that I know of that I found about him is, is that he's worked with Aviators, he's actually worked with uh, a Burning Bands Party. Uh, Warbound, as well as Feather. I'll be talking about Feather soon. <laughs> Most of the famous releases that we know of today is, has everybody heard of Rainbow Factory? Yes. yes. Ooh, there we go. Spoopy. <laughs> has everybody heard of Awoken? Yes. Spoopy. Okay. Morty, has everybody heard of Beyond Her Garden? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So one of the snippets I'll actually show for this is Beyond Her Garden. With a twist. So let's see if we can actually pick it up, and I will call out someone who can probably name that last little bit. So. Don't blow our eardrums out, please. 
Just a little on um, what on the next panel is going to start till 2.30. Did my... Okay, that's trying to get annoying. Um, the next panel is going to start till 2.30. We might go a little bit over because we had some difficulties at the start. Um, but I hold on, I promise. Feather. 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 Has anybody heard of Feather? One person? One? Oh, wait, no, two people. Two. I think I see someone way in the back. I'm going blind. Oh. You're wearing a first head, of course you are. <laughs> Alright, so Feather. Feather is a vocalist. She exclusively works as a vocalist. Nothing else. Her, she is actually considered as a high profile. What I mean by high profile is she is. Uh, she's good at what she does. She's good at what she does, and um, she's highly requested to sing a lot of backups, mains, uh, leads, all of that. Uh, so, she's actually Australian, I didn't know that. She doesn't Y'all. sound it. <laughs> I've got one. Uh, she's mainly a, she's actually started back in 2012. As a, Laura. Her name. Oh, yeah. Okay, again, you wrote this panel. I, I, <laughs> I mean, you wrote this. <laughs> her, her real name. <laughs> He's been a bad dragon. Um, her actual name is Laura. <laughs> her actual real name is Laura. Uh, I, we didn't get a last name, we're lazy. Of course, you can share it online. That's true. That's smart. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta well, keep distance. Song, it has, it, okay, so there's three songs that Has anybody heard of any of those songs? There's some of the examples, there's a lot more. Cool. Alright, so one of the songs, some of the songs that she sung for, for the leads and mains, was Rainbow by Ferocia. Sound Barrier by Tax, and Angel Eden by Avian. Those are the three songs that I found she's done more. But, so the song that we actually chose was the... R- Rainbow. Was it was the end the, Yeah, the very of, end of Rainbow. Um, and when she, I believe, is voicing Rainbow Dash. And is that, that, um, that photo there is the original thumbnail. It's a very dramatic, if not well-made song. Um, and... I'm pretty sure you didn't cut the end of this off, so we're gonna stop it halfway through because there's no, the, okay. out, the outro. Si- we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. There's we're, like, we're, we're on time. I know we're on time. So this song is actually Close a very enough. powerful song. Felt like like I like I uh, explained with um, our march by Net. So this one's actually very powerful. If you haven't found it, it is lost. You can actually find it on YouTube. That's the only place you can find it. Everywhere else, it's gone. There's a lot of applause. So the there. song that we're playing is Rainbow by Ferocia featuring Feather. Looks like we got some later rivals. <laughs> Let's race till we touch the sky. 
to live. Because it's about how do you really mess? Oh, I, I think I just killed him. I can sing this song entirely. You can't rap fast enough for I it. I can't rap fast enough for it, but I can sing the least. Okay. Beyond the Stars. Um, we get to talk about the stars. Beyond the Stars is our third and final segment, where we're going to talk about um, mostly Fergie again in this case, uh, but uh, the people that are beyond just the musicians themselves, the people that host the music, dance to the music, um, DJ the music, do all that sort of stuff. So, um, you want to start us out with the Fergie Radio broadcast slide? Go ahead and introduce your little FBN project. Like the fourth time. <laughs> shameless plug. Fourth shameless plug. Hey. Running out of outlets on the wall, dude. I, hey, I can sell a surge detector. I work for a company that does that. $35. Anybody want one? For you, uh, it, covers up, it covers up to $200,000 of equipment. You are therefore paying him for him to have more ad space in this panel. Go ahead and move your slides. Sir. Broadcasting Network. Broadcasting Network started as a main tech studio. Was Brony at one time, and I got tired of Brony Pen and left. I closed the door. I had to stay to right, and I would never see it again. Sure, he is immortal. Most of the stations that I host on there, two that are mine, one that's my friend's, one pop up radio is mine, main fan radio is mine, pop up radio focuses on furries, main fan radio focuses on Brony's, pony stream also focuses on Brony's. That guy's in the UK. I think I knew you had a I don't listen to him. I don't hear him. I don't talk to him. He just has his own station. Oh, so you don't communicate, but you just let him on to your server. Pretty much. Okay. What's Furry FM? Furry FM is a Swiss registered free radio station. They're just one example of some of the other online radio station fandom. Another one, All the Fur Radio, if you've ever heard that one. Um, Furry 8000, which I don't believe is around anymore. Um, what? Yeah, it got it a long time ago. It was a German radio event. Um, it was held in the thousands, um, about three times per year, and they host different music shows, podcasts, and it was primarily ran by an Ice Fuchs, which is German for ice box. It's not however you tried to pronounce that last time. It's called a Fuchs. I I don't. Sometimes you tried to call it like S Foss or I'm, I'm not, no, it's Ice Fuchs. It's Ice Fuchs. Um, or just Icebox, that works too. Um, the, which were both parts, uh, they were both my music foundation uh, in that era. So, um, for musical performers, music isn't just all about uh, singing and making it, at least not in this fandom. We have people who DJ it, dance to it, and uh, more people that dance to it. <laughs> I, want, I want to do raise. You want to do raise? You can do, yeah, you do raise. Okay, so who here knows who Big Blue Fox is? Cool. Um, well, Big Blue Fox is a very, very popular um, reoccurring DJ over at, in Germany for Euroference and the Method for Con Mini or the, the Method Mini Con um, that's held over there. Um, he is he's kind of like a staple for that convention, almost like Kage is for his store powers. Um, but outside of his DJing, he's an avid photographer and videographer. Anybody here know who Duke is or that dog? All right, people in the Duke is actually a secondary character of the um, free opera, which um, maybe you know, maybe you don't. I think Duke's become a lot more popular because of all his musical endeavors. But um, he uh, was one of the founders for the Free Down uh, um, convention over in Australia. And um, on YouTube and SoundCloud, a bunch of other places, he's done song covers of a lot of different songs, mostly like, um, like little pop furry songs that you'd find people dancing to. Uh, Wonderful, Wonderwall, We Own the Night, um, and more. Um, specifically, um, does anybody here know about MFF 2014? I'm not gonna say, but um, um, in the aftermath, uh, he uh, made a music video to the song Que Sera, which if you ever look it up, it's a very interesting story behind that. Shad, do you wanna talk about Ray's? He's here. He is? Yes. Oh crap. Sniper is here. Oh that's sni oh that's sniper? That's sniper. Oh right, my bad. Yes, so Oh yeah, I took a photo with him. I don't I'm such an idiot. I don't know all the 
Williams. I'm That's sorry. That's the one that took a photo of the Yes, I know. So, I see Twilight Save. I know who that is. Snyder is known by Twilight Save. He's actually an artist. He does a lot of fursuit dancing, mainly fursuit dancing and more art, as well as he is a regular competitor, meaning he kind of does showcases for dance competitions, all that. Uh, you can find him. He is here. He's at the convention. I don't know how long he's staying, but he brought Rays, he brought Sniper, and I don't know exactly what else he brought. brought. He brought Twilight Sand. That's Rays. Oh. Rays, <laughs> Sniper, and someone else. I don't know. He brought three suits. Uh, uh, other than that, what is Furry Net? You mean Fuzznet. Fuzznet, I can't see. <laughs> Fuzznet, MFF's successor. Um, I like to call this the successor to the Furry Music Foundation ever since I found it, because it has similar goals. Um, and trying to bring you know, music together, although in a more modern format. Um, Fuzznet is a professional entertainment network that has a lot of projects, including uh, video content, podcasts, and they even do commissions. But um, one of their, their biggest projects by far is Fuzznet Music, which is a furry owned and run record label. Um, it is the biggest furry music team currently in the fandom, I believe, possibly ever. There was a lot of people in the FMF, but um, only, I believe, in the high 40s at um, they offer international distribution, um, digitally and physically, I believe, and they heavily support independency, which means for all the musicians, there are no contracts, um, completely up to the musician. They want to kind of break away from what the music industry has become and just, you know, be furry about it. So, um, statistically, they have over 50 artists that are working with them, and they have produced over 300 songs under their name. They did more. Um, that's what's written on the slide. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they've done more. Closing the final part that probably everyone here is waiting for. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> this is where we get questions. I know there's probably some out there. Uh, photos can be done after the convention, out, excuse me, after the panel, outside. If you guys want photos of Shadow uh, or some other interviews that you might want to see in here. Shadow any Lebar. final thoughts, Scar? Do you have any questions? Any questions? Um, there are a lot of people I wish I could have talked about, but unfortunately for the sake of brevity and we just didn't have time to. Um, if you haven't seen Pepper Coyote, he's in the dealer's den. Check him out. He's awesome. Uh, I, don't, I don't have anything. You guys enjoying the con? Yeah. 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 Cool. No. I still like handball. What's up? What's your favorite uh, Emma Elias? What? Um, Emma has like slap fox charts. So What's your favorite Elias of theirs? <laughs> I gotta blame. I can't blame them. I, I don't know, but um, two of my favorite. I've 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 only listened to like this much of this much of the music, but um, some of my standouts are Furries in a Blender and uh, what's that? Kitsune Squared. That was a good one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Quick Brown Fox. I love the Wonderlust album. I love the Wonderlust album. That's awesome. No, I'll sell another hand to y'all. Anyone? What's up? What's up? Hello, two panelists who I don't know. Um, That's a lie. Are... That's a lie. Wow, we are to me out. We <laughs> better trust me again. Okay, uh, you, met, you guys mentioned um, that uh, like there's a lot of like electronic and like EDM stuff yes. that goes on in these and the uh, brony and furry bit. And I'm like, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about like the distribution of genre and like if that's um, changed at all over time. I don't. That, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the problem. Um, when it comes to tracking like um, cultural shifts in the fandom, in some places it's pretty easy because of how small, uh, how big it is. Um, because well, I mean, furry spread all over the place. If they're spread thin, kind of like the musicians are, it's hard to keep track of a lot of them. Especially nowadays, where there's, um, I believe it's in the hundreds, possibly the thousands, but at least the hundreds of musicians, which sounds like a lot, but in some ways it's not when you think of how many people are in the fandom and some of the other art mediums. Um, EDM definitely does seem to be the most uh, commonly um, practice form of making music, although there are a lot of different genres within that. Um, if you ever go on like uh, for Affinity, actually, I believe they started doing Free Music Friday, I'm oh, sorry, Free Music Monday, where they share different musicians um, from their platform and featured them, which is something I was actually very proud of. Because um, they're given more um, light to this very niche art, kind of niche uh, genre of art. But, um, yeah, and realistically, there's a lot of diversity. You just gotta go in and look. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other oh, questions? Oh, oh, I see two people that I know. I see they're, they're, they're one person hide. that I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I... All right, guys. Well, I guess what's up? Um, Questions? Uh, Last minute question. Going once. Going twice. Sold to nobody because this isn't an auction. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's it. That was over. Have a good one. Thank you for attending. Thank you.